हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सेकंड सेशन फॉर नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड साइंस वेल अप टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वेरी वेल अबाउट अ टिपिकल सेल डिस्कवरी ऑफ द सेल्स एंड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द सेल लेटर ऑन वी वेंट ऑन टू इनटू द टाइप्स ऑफ द सेल्स दैट इज डिपेंडिंग ऑन द नंबर वी हैव डन यूनिसेलुलर एंड द मल्टी सेलुलर then we went on to the three major regions of a cell that is the plasma membrane the nucleus and the cytoplasm and we have discussed very well about the plasma membrane and the covering of the plasma membrane specifically in case of the plant cells that is the cell wall so today our main focus of attention is the central region of a cell that is the nucleus now let us examine the structure of a typical nucleus now if we observe the structure of a typical nucleus a typical nucleus consists of the outer membrane which is mainly double layer and this double layer is not continuous it is having some sort of gaps in between them and these gaps are known as nuclear pores fine going into the structure of the nucleus that is inner side we find the fluid of the nucleus and that fluid of the nucleus is said to be the nucleoplasm so the materials they can easily flow from the cytoplasm to the nucleoplasm through the minute pores that are present in the nuclear membrane now this nucleoplasm mainly consists of two major regions the nucleoid and the chromatin the nucleoid which if it is very well developed then it is said to be a nucleolus so it mainly consist of nucleolus and the chromatin focusing on the nucleolus now this nucleolus is the main site for the synthesis of the proteins and the chromatin network or the chromatin these are somewhat thread like structures which they become chromosomes at the time of metaphase of a cell division metaphase is a phase of the cell division now this chromatin which later on becomes a chromosome it mainly consists of the dna and proteins so it is exclusively made up of dna and proteins now what is this dna let us see the full form of dna now dna it is deoxy ribonucleic acid now this dna is ultimately responsible for maintaining the characteristics from one generation to the next it means that we are humans we have the characteristics of humans only just as for example a child is there that child is having the characteristics of his parents the parents are having the characteristics of their parents so likewise the characteristics are basically transferred from one generation to the next furthermore a small segment of this dna is known as a g so we can say that yes a structural and functional unit of a chromosome or a chromatin is known as a gene so gene are the units of the inheritance inheritance means the transfer of the characteristics from one generation to the next further depending on the nucleus if it is very well developed or not there are two types of organisms they are the prokaryotic organisms and the eukaryotic organisms let us dissect the word prokaryotic 
pro means primitive and karyotic means the nucleus so if the nucleus is primitive means if it is not very well developed then we call it as a prokaryotic and the organisms are known as prokaryotic organisms there are typical bacterial cell is there which is highly prokaryotic in nature the second one that is the eukaryotic cell eu means very well developed and the karyon means the nucleus so here the nucleus is very well developed and a lot of plants and animal cells they are mainly eukaryotic in nature now let us go into the differences between the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell here there is an entire table that shows the differences between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes basically in these differences we can easily observe the difference between the size it means that the prokaryotes are generally smaller in size and the eukaryotes are mostly larger or they are bigger in size the examples also we can easily observe it out later on the difference in case of the ribosomes means the prokaryotes are not having a very well developed ribosomes or they are absolutely absent also in certain cases while in case of the eukaryotes the ribosomes are also present there the formation of the cell wall so the differences will be able to observe in case of the cell wall also the way with which they divide that is the way with which the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes they undergo some sort of division so the variations in that case is also there so a lot of points are there as the differences between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes now moving on into the cytoplasm of a typical cell now what is the cytoplasm cytoplasm is the fluid of the cell that is mainly and exclusively present between the plasma membrane and the nuclear membrane now this fluid it is made up of various substances like the carbohydrates proteins and fats but the main function that is done by the cell is because of the cytoplasm consisting of various organelles so the organelles that are present inside the cytoplasm they are endoplasmic reticulum then mitochondria then ribosomes golgi body vacuoles lysosomes and so on now the first organelle that we shall study is endoplasmic reticulum now if you observe the structure of a typical endoplasmic reticulum it has some sort of tube like structure some sort of bag like structures and these bags are known as the vesicles so it possesses both the tubes as well as the bag like structures now there are certain regions where this endoplasmic reticulum is mainly present so it is basically present between the nuclear membrane and the plasma membrane it forms a continuous thread like structures now if the ribosomes which are one of the organelles if ribosomes are present on the surface of this endoplasmic reticulum then it is said to be a rough endoplasmic reticulum and if certain regions of endoplasmic reticulum where these ribosomes are absent then they are said to be the smooth endoplasmic reticulum now rough endoplasmic reticulum if ribosomes are there then they are said to be rough but when ribosomes are there one of the major function is protein synthesis so rough endoplasmic reticulum does the function of protein synthesis the second one that is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum now as smooth endoplasmic reticulum is not having any sort of ribosomes so it does the function for the storage and it helps in the process for the formation of various membranes 
and specifically the plasma membrane and that process is known as membrane biogenesis genesis means to prepare so therefore it is said to be membrane biogenesis furthermore this endoplasmic reticulum it helps in the transport of various substances in between the cytoplasm in case of a lot of vertebrates it helps in the detoxifying the body means if at all some harmful substances enter the body it automatically kills those substances and saves the organism now the next organelle that we shall focus on is the golgi body now golgi body was mainly discovered by camillo golgi he identified the structure of a typical golgi body and he observed that like the other organelles it is also a membrane bound organ having some sort of tube like structures as well as a bag like structure that is a vesicle it is mainly located near the endoplasmic reticulum so whichever materials are given by the endoplasmic reticulum they are mainly given to the golgi body so what golgi body does it mainly helps in the packaging of the substances so it packs the substances in a well organized manner and then later on it transports these substances to various other regions of the cytoplasm moving on into the next organelle that is the lysosomes now lysosomes are some sort of typical round structures with a typical membrane they have specialized enzymes present inside them. and these enzymes are known as digestive enzymes or the lytic enzymes now these digestive enzymes they help in the purpose of digestion that is in case of the amoeba but in a typical cell these lysosomes are known as the suicidal bags of the cell now why they are known as the suicidal bags of the cell let us dissect it now whenever the cell is not working properly or whenever the cell is not in an organized manner the lysosomes may burst and as a result of which the digestive enzymes will be coming outside in the region of the cytoplasm and the nucleus it will be killing off the regions which are not working properly so ultimately the cell will die so it is mainly killing the cell in which it is living so therefore it is said to be the suicidal bags of the cell thank you very much in the next class we shall discuss in much detail about the other cell